All right, so here we're looking at the formula for a cone. Pause the video, try the problem on your own, and then compare it to the solution here. Okay, the volume of a cone V is one-third pi r squared h. And a little bit of background there, uh, if you have a cone, this is my cone right here, right, imagine we have a cone. A cone is a, a three-dimensional shape with a circle on the bottom. And I think typically, when we look at a cone, if you draw a height to the peak of the cone, that line is perpendicular to the base, right? So we have our cone here, it has a height, uh, the circle on the bottom is forming the base of the cone, and here you can look at certain slices of this height. Imagine if you just cut it out and you would get these right triangles here because it's perpendicular to the base. And that allows us to understand the surface area and all these other really cool things about the cone. Um, but what's really nice about the cone is that it relates beautifully to a cylinder. Now imagine we had a cylinder with the exact size, same base as the cone I just drew. So imagine this circle here is the exact same size as this circle here. Now, if that cylinder also had the same height here as the cone, um, right, it's a height like this. Okay, so this is my drawing of a cylinder. So these two shapes have the same base and the same height. What would you infer about these two shapes? Which one would have a larger volume? Well, the cylinder would have a larger volume. You can always see that the cone, right, if you drew the cone inside the cylinder with the same height and base, that's my cone, you can see that it has all this empty space on both sides all the way around, um, right, it's three dimensions all the way around the shape. There's these empty, empty spaces here. So the cylinder holds more. But how much more? How many cones does it take to fill a cylinder? Well, it turns out that the cone fits into this cylinder precisely three times. Isn't that wonderful, right? Precisely three times. So if we know that a cylinder's volume is the area of a circle on the base, the circle is pi times radius squared, so this circle right here is the pi r squared part. Now you multiply it by the height. That's the volume of a cone. If we just take that and divide it by 3 or multiply it by a third like they're doing in this example, then we have the volume of a cone. Isn't that great? And also the sphere, of course, um, if we... The, 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 the cylinder I have to draw would have, this, have to have the same height. Same height here as it does diameter. For a circle on the bottom, so be maybe a cylinder kind of like this. Let me redraw that. Right, that's a little better. Um, and I'm saying it has to be a different kind of cylinder because in order to compare the cylinder to a sphere, the sphere has to actually fit inside of it. Uh, if you think about the way a sphere works, oops, let me draw that. All right, this cylinder, this sphere right here. So imagine the sphere inside. The sphere's height is the same as its width. Right, it's the diameter. So the same as you drew the cylinder in order for it to hold the sphere perfectly, the height of this um, cylinder, h, is equal to the diameter of the circle on the bottom. Right. So here, um, the sphere holds less than the cylinder, and it holds precisely two thirds of the cylinder. And the cylinder is pi r squared h. Sometimes for the sphere, we don't see that formula. We see them right. Um, Three fourths, oh, excuse me, four thirds pi r cubed, like this, four thirds pi r cubed. And these formulas are identical. And you can see that because, in, right, if we go back to our little, my little sketch right here, the height of the sphere is really made from what? Well, if the height and diameter are equal, it means you can think of the height as a diameter. And if we split our diameter in half, this piece of your, your diameter or height is really one radius. Remember, a radius and a radius make a diameter. So that means that this height right here equals two radiuses, right? Radius plus a radius equals this height. So the in-between step that I use to connect these formulas is two-thirds pi r squared times what? Well, we just said two radiuses. Two radiuses is the height. And then if we simplify this, two times two Right, multiply 2 by 2 thirds, that's 4 thirds, and radius times radius squared is radius cubed. Um, now, I know there's a lot more background than you need for this problem, but I think, um, especially on the regents, uh, and also, of course, in general geometry and algebra, you should realize that, the, that many of these shapes connect so wonderfully to each other. Um, so, all of these shapes are connected through the cylinder here, the cone and the sphere. Anyway, so they want us to write the radius r um, in of the cone in terms of the other uh, 
variables and numbers and uh, in this case pi. So we want to isolate r. So let's do that. So here the volume right, equals one-third pi r squared times h. How do we isolate r? How do we do that? Well the first thing I want to use is my commutative property. So I take pi and h um, and I want to get them next to each other. I want to get r squared on one end of this block of letters. So what I write is one-third times pi times height times radius squared. I, I switch the order. And I do that because I can use the, because this becomes easier for me to solve, but I, I do that. I'm able to do that because of the commutative property of multiplication. Now we'll use the associative property and group these terms together. That says, of course, that we can group parts of a multiplication or addition sequence and solve what those parts are first, and that will not alter anything in your work. Um, so here, these three things, a third times pi times h is one big number, right, or one number. And that means, if you think about what we do usually in a situation with algebra, let's say we had v equals 2 times r squared. How would you get r squared by itself? Right? Well, you would divide, you would divide by 2. Right? You would get rid of the number here and divide by 2 on both sides. Well, if this is one big number, we can divide by the whole thing at once. Even though it doesn't look as friendly, we can do that. So we divide both sides by 1 third pi h. Now that gives us r squared equals v divided by 1 third times pi times h. Now, if we want to get r all by itself, r is being squared, we square root both sides. So, I square root r squared, that'll give me r. Right, the square root of a squaring is just canceling out, those are inverse operations, and r is equal to the square root of v over one-third pi h. Now, they might not give us this answer because usually we don't leave fractions in the denominator. So we can rewrite this. Um, if you're dividing by a third, that's the same as multiplying by three. Right? Just think about a simple situation for a moment. If you have five and you're dividing by one third, what does that mean? That means how many one thirds are there in five objects? One, two, three, four, five. If every object has three thirds, this is my peace sign kind of being drawn over again. Right? There are three thirds in each five, in each whole, excuse me. So there are one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Three thirds in each whole. Five divided by a third is saying how many thirds are in five. So to figure that out, to get 15, there are 15 thirds here, you could multiply by the reciprocal, three over one. And five times three over one is just five times three or 15. So here in general, V divided by a third is the same thing as three times V. So we could write this in this way, right? 3 times v divided by pi h, and that equals r. Let's see which, uh, which version they have up here. Oh, and there it is, um, choice 1, right? 3v over pi times h, and that's our answer. All right, hope this helped.